Contrary to popular belief, what's not a bad thing? Curious children. That's like. The best thing for a child to be because they want to learn the facts and form their own opinions, but parents act as if they're like inappropriate or annoying. Curiosity in general, not just in children, is looked down upon I think. Political leaders admitting they are wrong and doing a U-turn. I agree, though it seems that political leaders that admit a wrong or change position tend not to be political leaders for long, because they lose party support and political cachet. Not being into social media doesn't mean you are behind the times. It's a choice. Edit, thank you very much kind strangers for the upvotes and awards. The first time for me. Glad to know that so many of us deal with the pressures of either not being on certain social media platforms, or using it as we see fit, with the strength of making our own decisions and not bowing down to preset norms. Something about people not knowing everything about me and what I'm doing in my life is very peaceful to me. Saying no when someone asks you to do something that they're entirely capable of doing. Ugh. My neighbor just called me to come fix her guest bed. She has a house full of relatives from California in, and I really don't feel like exposing myself to whatever might be in that house. Plus, why can't one of them fix the damn bed? I said I was busy, but I might be able to do it later. I'm on the fence about this. Follow up, thanks for all the comments. I ended up telling my neighbor that I wasn't feeling too great, and that I'd hate to bring something over to her and her guests. I asked for more information about the bed. It is apparently sagging in the middle. I told her to get her nephew to put a block of some kind underneath the bed, and to let me know if that doesn't fix the problem. Disappointing your parents or friends by your life decisions. Usually, they come around in time when they see what you chose is what makes you happy, and that is what they really wanted in the end anyway. It can be an uncomfortable wait until that time comes, but it is shorter and feels better than a lifetime of regret. Breakups. Sometimes it's better to end things instead of trying to hold a failing relationship together. Edit, thanks for all the great replies to my simple comment, as well as the awards. I got broken up with by my first real GF on New Year's and all these comments have helped me see that life will move on and I'm not alone. May we all have better luck this year. In my divorce group there was a saying, there are plenty of failed marriages where the parties are still together. I've recently ended a decade-long relationship with who I thought was the one. It's still very civil between us and this is for the best. Did the same dot today point 13 years. Shoot man my heart goes out to you. If you wanna DM me and talk about our new lives then please do bud. Putting your own happiness before the expectations of your family. Edit. I'm going to clarify that I meant more along the line that you shouldn't allow the expectations from family members like parents grandparent uncles aunts etc to get in the way of what makes you happy. I kept the comment more open-ended since situations can differ wildly and different people can have different reasons for feeling this way so I didn't want to be too specific. This issue came up today, and I'm glad I've just seen your comment. Almost like it was meant for me. Thank you. Somebody who changes their beliefs. Know better, do better, right? There's a lot of things I used to believe or think when I was younger and more sheltered than I currently think. Age and experience change perceptions, and I think that's healthy in most cases. I've heard a bunch of people spouting off recycling isn't worth it, it is even worse for the environment than just throwing it away. This is case of hearing something correct and just blanket applying it to everything. There are certain things that are undeniably better to recycle, specifically metals. And for glass and paper there are ways to make it environmentally positive. Plastics are the hardest due to contamination, but we can make it better as well as reduce single-use plastics. Yes corporations tricked us into believing recycling was the key to fixing the environment, but that doesn't mean that recycling can't be useful. Gaming for a couple, edit, few, hours straight. 
If you enjoy doing it and don't neglect your life there really is no difference to binge watching something or reading a book. I never realized how cool video games are until I started dating my BF. He mostly plays story-driven games and they're really fun to watch. They're like interactive movies. Defending yourself against a customer who is extremely rude. I didn't know until about a week ago that the saying the customer is always right is actually supposed to be the customer is always right in matters of taste. If you have a customer that is a fuck it is plenty okay to tell them to fuck off. You don't want them as a customer anyways. I just started firing customers for my business a couple years ago, and what I know firing those 5 to 10 customers has made me enjoy my job immensely more. Contentment. I not only don't need an exciting life, I actively don't want one. One of my friends loves to travel and do crazy shit scuba diving, swimming with sharks, going on days long backpacking trips not at all for me. She cannot fathom the fact I don't care for travel. Edit, a lot of people are homing in on the travel thing I'm really just using that as an example of living excitingly. I truly just mean anything that gives off a rush. Not for me. If you are already happy where you are, there's no need to introduce sharks into the mix. Edit, well that's a first. Liking vanilla sex. Edit, thank you kind strangers for the awards, support and words of encouragement in the comments below. Nobody deserves to be shamed based on their personal preferences. My ex complained that she thought her sex was really boring and was always pushing me to do stuff I wasn't really into. Now my wife and I have very vanilla sex in the three basic positions, and it's really great. Edit, based on the comments, a surprising number of people seem to find doggy style to be a very exotic position. The stigma behind talking about your pay with fellow co-workers. In the states it is legal, by talking about your wages you help ensure you and co-workers are being paid fairly. Edit, I made an oopsie. I think it was understood but what I mean is. You should talk about your wages. At my old job, a manager for another site who was visiting my location tried to scold me for asking my coworker how much she makes when she made a comment about not getting paid enough. He said it's illegal and super inappropriate. We were teenagers working at a car wash. Literally nobody would care if we discussed our pay, and it's actually, from what I've heard, illegal to try to prevent people from talking about their pay in the US. Being frugal, to a point. I think being able to control spending habits, save money, and being able to assess what items are necessary versus excessive in one's life is often overlooked in a consumerist society. Until this year, I was using my iPhone 4 happily. Friends and family would constantly make jokes about my ancient phone, and how I am just too cheap to buy a new one. The truth was that it was still working fine and fulfilling all the needs I had for a phone. So why spend money to replace something that is still working? Note, I am not advocating for the extremes of this like my previous roommate who refused to turn on our AC or heating. It once read 51 degrees Fahrenheit on our thermostat during December.